Um, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is the first press conference of the second day of the World Economic Forum on ASEAN. Thank you for being with us today uh, to talk about how to eliminate malaria. I would like to first uh, introduce my panel here and then we will uh, let them speak on the is um, their, uh, their position on, on this issue. We go with Mr. Dr. Benjamin Roth, CEO, Asia-Pacific Leader, Malaria Alliance. Thank you for being with us. Mr. Stephen Grove, Vice President, East Asia, Southeast Asia and the Pacific for the ADB Asia Development Bank. Mr. Serge Poon, um, Chairman, Serge Poon Association from Myanmar. We will start with um, Dr. Roth to give us the context on your fight against malaria. Malaria is a disease older than humankind and in fact the whole world used to have malaria. Elimination of this disease will probably be more important for humanity than putting a man on the moon. It's an enormous endeavour and we now have 23 heads of government committed to eliminating by 2030. So we have extraordinary leadership behind the initiative which is fantastic. Financing has been increasing and just in January this year the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, TB and Malaria announced 243 million to support elimination in the Greater Mekong sub-region. And here in Vietnam, 10 years ago, there were 242 deaths every year. We're now down to almost zero deaths. So the progress across the region has been extraordinary. The challenge we now have is multi-drug resistant malaria. That's spreading across the Greater Mekong sub-region. And if we don't stop that in its tracks, and the only way to do it is by eliminating malaria, we will see potentially a deadly resurgence over the entire world as we lose the one frontline drug that we have available to treat malaria. So it's a story of good news, incredible progress, but now really a huge need to see it through to the end game in the next five years. You can go to Mr. Groff now, so on, on the, the bank, um, I think you have a new fund to fight this. Could you tell us about it? Well, um, we're in the process of, process of establishing a regional health fund. Um, and the purpose of that is recognition essentially of the fact that many countries in the region have for some time uh, been dependent on, on vertical funds and donor funds to help support uh, the fight against communicable diseases including malaria, TB, um, and, and others. And, and the challenge there is that many countries in the region, of course, the, with the success of economic growth, are essentially growing out of access to a lot of these funds. And by 2020, we anticipate uh, that many of the countries will actually have very little, if no, access uh, to this kind of grant funding to help um, fight these kinds of diseases. And so what ADB is doing is we're in the process of, of discussing with, with Applema, our colleagues, and with the Global Fund, um, setting up a, t a fund that would essentially provide grant money that could go in alongside uh, the investments we at the Asian Development Bank make in this sector uh, that would, would reduce the cost of our funds to those countries that are interested in, in continuing to address these issues even after uh, they lose access to the kinds of grant funding that they're very much dependent on. Another element of this, of course, is the fact that, um, that, these, that these, the, the vertical funds have long recognized uh, that the issue goes well beyond just uh, the, the incidence of these diseases, uh, but the health systems uh, more broadly. And that's something that ADB has been working on in many of these countries is, is, is getting uh, is supporting countries in universal health access and strengthening health systems. And so we do hope that through the establishment of such a fund uh, and the mobilization of additional grant resources, we'll not only be able to improve uh, these countries' ability to, to, to deal with these diseases on a continual basis, but in the process also strengthen the health sector um, and, and health access uh, across the countries as a whole. Mr. Poon, and I think also you have, um, you also leading an organization called Yuma Strategic. Right. Could you help us from the business, as a business leader, how are you fighting this? How are you supporting this? Well, from a business um, community point of view, we, we are cognizant of the fact that this fight against malaria is something that we as the business community has a great deal of responsibility. In the past, I think, um, you know, we feel that this is something that perhaps the government or the health organizations and, and other people should be doing and where we are in business. But today, I think the, the whole mindset, the whole 
the whole uh, uh, basis of doing business and the, the missions and the, 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 the goals of business have changed considerably. And we take social responsibility a lot more serious than we used to. Um, so the Omar strategic uh, uh, um, stance is that, yes, in the fight against malaria in Myanmar, where, where, where we are most active, we would take a, a, a lead role, you know, and uh, together with our other uh, colleagues in other countries that have taken a lead role, we will <clears throat> do our share in, in Myanmar in, in achieving the goals of, um, of uh, 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 Apple Myanmar and, 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 and uh, M2030 goals, yeah. And maybe um, Mr. Grob can tell us a little bit more also, what about the government? What about the government? How can government help on this? Um, well, I think you know, governments have a very critical role to play uh, in this regard. I mean, we do very much think that the private sector has a strong role. Uh, and we appreciate the, the, the work that's being done by Mr. Pun and, and, and you know, securities more broadly on that front. Um, and in fact, in, in, in Myanmar, we have seen a dramatic decline um, in, in malaria by about 64% over the last five years. So that's a testimony to um, that kind of partnership and testimony to the, the work that the government has done and, and the private sector has contributed. Um, but governments have a very, very important role in, uh, in, in that, you know, that, that they do, are responsible for uh, making sure that all citizens of that country have access to health care. Um, and that is important not only um, for sort of essential you know, reasons of, 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 of philanthropy and, and goodwill, but it's also an important economic issue. Um, one thing that's been, you know, revealed over the course of many years and many studies is that human capital and human capital accumulation is critical uh, to economic growth. It's critical to productivity growth, which in turn has great returns to economic growth. Um, and the healthier your, your society is, um, and the more resilient your society is, the stronger and more sustainable uh, growth will be. So it's not only uh, you know, a charity in that sense and, 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 a, and an obligation of governments to provide for their citizens, but it's also important economically as well. And would you like to add on what is next for the Alliance? Sure. Well, I think you see here, certainly in this meeting today, the complementary um, resources that governments, regional development banks like ADB and the private sector bring to this fight. You know, the private sector leaders are now the most trusted leaders in the region. The surveys show that the young people in the region aspire to the business leaders in this region. So business leaders coming out to support malaria elimination and then using their reach, their influence, their resource mobilization capacity to support that fight is an extraordinary asset. Then with the ADB coming into this space, taking a health systems perspective, you, know, you cannot eliminate malaria without robust health systems, a village health worker in every village. And the ADB is more than a bank. You know, when you finance a car, the bank don't tell you which car to buy or how to fix it. But ADB are there for the end game. They will support the government at the most senior levels right the way through until the job is done. And so with the private sector and the regional development banks and now 23 heads of government, including all of the Mekong region leaders supporting the initiative, I'm very optimistic that we can eliminate within the next 10 years, hopefully sooner. Or sooner. Or yes. sooner. Yeah. So um, do we have any questions from the floor? Any, please. Could you state your name? Just wait for the microphone and your organization, please. Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Jenny Ravelo, reporter for DevEx. Um, my question for VP Groff, um, I know that um, you're still looking to capitalize this fund. Um, I just want to know how much grant financing funding is ADB um, contributing to it? Um, and for um, Mr. Poon, I just want to ask, what value do you see for your business in um, helping address um, malaria in Myanmar? Thank you. Uh, well, thank you, Jenny, for that question. We're still in the process of, of, of determining what that, what that is. This is sort of a, a, a fund that we are starting now and starting discussions around now. We've reached agreement around sort of the general conditions, uh, but we have not yet determined uh, what the full amounts that will be contributed to the fund are. Uh, we do hope that we'll be able to generate um, significant interest in this, and we're very grateful to the Global Fund uh, for their support in that regard. And, and the Global Fund itself recognizes um, that with you know, this you know, nearing year of 2020, when, when their funds are not going to be as uh, robustly available in the region, it's important that we provide other uh, funds that will help 
uh, reduce the cost uh, to governments of, of addressing these issues. And, and, and of course, as, you know, as Ben uh, mentioned, the, the challenge really is one that it's not an individual country problem. Uh, when you look at, at other kinds of issues that the ADB addresses, often there are things that are specific to an individual's gov government policy. Um, whereas this is, 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 you know, when you look at the Mekong region, particularly, you know, what happens in one country uh, when, you when you're talking about communicable diseases has impacts in other countries. And so we need to work on this collectively. Uh, and that's where grant funding is important because it's not just uh, how one country is choosing to deal with it or the economic level or, or GDP level of one country. We have to think a little bit more broadly across the region. So that's why we think grant find it, funding is important. And that's why we're quite confident that we'll be successful in raising funds for this, uh, for this movement. Well, to your question, Jenny, I, I think um, for, for us, uh, we're really not thinking in terms of what value there's going to be for our business. Uh, it's more what we can do towards this mission, what value we can give towards this mission. We're not in the pharmaceutical business. We're not in the business of selling, selling some services to eradicate uh, uh, malaria. We're, we're, we're just doing our duty, hoping that we will add some value to this whole exercise rather than what value we're going to get from this exercise. I guess that, that would be my answer. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have more questions? With the yes, please. Hi. Uh, good morning. I'm Mohan from Cambodia, Khmer Times. Uh, my question is, the issue of malaria has been set again and again and again, and yet there are many strains of malaria which are drug resistant. So what part of the fund would you be contributing towards trying to find uh, a, a magic bullet or a silver bullet to get rid of uh, malaria or to control it. Thank you. Anyone? Please. Let me take that one. Um, you're absolutely right to identify multi-drug resistant malaria as a major global threat and the epicenter has historically been in the Mekong and indeed in Cambodia. This has mobilized an enormous amount of global interest and the Global Fund has committed $243 million this year to fight it on top of a further $100 million they, they committed three years ago. The good news is that countries are now matching that money. So we've now reached a tipping point where governments are now spending more than 50% of the total volume. They're covering more than 50% of the total um, investment. So governments are stepping up, leaders are stepping up and we're seeing some progress but it isn't fast enough. And what our hope is, is that mobilizing business leaders to use both their influence, their financing, and their ability to mobilize decision makers in countries, we can sustain the political leadership and interest and visibility around these issues for the next five to 10 years as we really stamp out malaria. The challenge is we become victims of our own success. As malaria cases go down and down, it becomes harder and harder to keep this on the agenda. And if you talk to any Minister of Health in the region, they want to talk about dengue because that's what's on the front of the newspapers and what's affecting their middle class voters. Malaria is a disease of the rural poor and it's an unfinished agenda for the region's development. And this is why we so much welcome the leadership shown by ADB and the private sector, particularly Yoma Strategic Holdings, is that they have latched on to this message that we must take a health systems approach, but we must focus on this unfinished agenda of the rural poor rural development to make sure that no one is left behind with this extraordinary ASEAN growth story. This is very true on the dengue and then the Sika and, and so on. Anyone would like to add to this? Any more questions? I think we we would like to you would like to have a closing statement on maybe Mr. Poon how the other business leaders could follow you into fighting against malaria. Well, we're always calling upon our business community, uh, whether you're a big company or a small company or a medium-sized company, I think you can all play a role. It's, this is not something that you have to be very big or uh, uh, very rich to be, to be part of it because there's so many ways to, to contribute to the combat of eradication of malaria. Uh, and uh, I, I really would like to to call upon uh, the business people, the private sector, to participate. Um, 
Um, we, we hope that we, we would uh, lead the way, but we definitely hope that there's a lot of people coming along with us on this journey. One, yeah. one final point that I think speaks very much to the theme of the World Economic Forum ASEAN meeting is that what's happening here is that aid and support for development priorities is moving into ASEAN. These are, this is ASEAN for ASEAN, particularly with M2030, ASEAN leaders, Vietnamese, um, Cambodian, Thai, uh, Myanmar business leaders supporting elimination in their own countries. The Asian Development Bank, very much an institution of the Asia-Pacific region, supporting the region to reach development goals. So th the old model of money coming from Geneva, from the US, from Western donors, is really shifting, and the locus is now within the region. I think that's an extremely exciting development, much broader than health or malaria, actually, in its significance. And I believe this work out other region can also follow suit as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Mr. Grok. And, and just in closing as well, I, you know, I think that we've seen across this region, and everybody so well knows, you know, just phenomenal economic success over the last several decades, um, and, and, and a great uh, reduction in, in poverty across, across all countries in the region. Um, but the challenge with these types of issues is that these disproportionately affect the poor. And so unless we are successful at addressing these issues, we're not really going to uh, finish uh, this process of, 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 of economic growth in the region and, and the, the realization by all these countries of, of their aspirations towards um, you know, stronger, more resilient, and, and healthier societies. So that's why we think this is important, uh, and that's why we'll continue to do this kind of work in the future. Thank you very much, and we hope we fight this before 2030. Thank you. Thank you, the audience. Thank you.